The Lord be with you. Happy Pentecost Sunday. It's uh, a wonderful day today with the lessons that talk about the Spirit of God being set loose on this earth, on the people of the earth. And with that comes hope, immense hope. Let's worship together. Please remain seating. We'll uh, remain seated until we have, uh, right after the hymn of the day, our call to worship. Spirit alive, wind blowing. Poured out on all. Young and old. Skipping or limping. Spirit alive, fire burning. Touching all. Daughters and sons. Strong ones and smart ones. Outspoken ones and shy ones. Poor and oppressed. Spirit alive. Wind and fire. Stirring us to praise. Setting loose a song of joy. We have a song now by, by uh, Thaddeus of Joyful Joyful. Thaddeus was accompanying himself. The recording is what he did on another instrument. Um, and so his talents come in, in multiple instruments and then putting that together. Thank you, Thaddeus. You bring us more joy than you know. And may God bless you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter, and our joy. Amen. Look, here's water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. 
In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. O living breath of God. Please stand as you are able. The grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and mine be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth and give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Our first lesson comes from the second chapter of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native tongue? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Psalm 104. How manifold are your works, O Lord. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to number, living things both small and great. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. 
You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. And Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth, and it trembles. You touch the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Our second lesson is from the eighth chapter of Romans. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen and not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I'm going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I've said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the rule of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The gospel of the Lord. Let's pray together. O oh, Holy Spirit, come. As you are poured out in Pentecost, come and pour out and spread your spirit over this earth today. Over us, that our eyes might be open to see you, that we might be drawn to your calling that we might love you more dearly and testify to your goodness. Over this earth, O oh Lord, that there might be reconciliation and peace, communication and understanding, end of wars and compassion. O oh Lord, speak to us this day. Show us what you are about and thank you for including us in your vision. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. It's such a good greeting. Can't think of anything better than the Lord being with us. 
And the Spirit of the Lord poured out in Pentecost is what that's all about. Jesus says, I go to the Father so you might have the Spirit, so that we might have the Spirit and presence of God in our lives. I was away last week, but two weeks ago I told you a little bit about our trip to Kathmandu, to Nepal. And I told you that we got in the plane and flew to the other side of the earth, that after we'd been flying forever, and I looked down, we had flown for more than 2,000 miles. The little register in front of me said, only nine more hours to go. We flew, my old weary eyes got to see in those hours looking out over the earth. I got to see Norway and Sweden and Finland and Russia and Kazakhstan and Afghanistan and Pakistan, India. I got to see Iran, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Turkey. I got to see all those places from the air and as I looked down and thought about what I was seeing, I thought about what is life like for the people down below? We passed near big cities, and we also were in a lot of remote areas. And looking down, we saw villages that seemed so isolated. And I wondered if they had any electricity, any radio, any communication, what they knew about the rest of the world is going on. And we flew over these people. And our flight was diverted because of conflicts. So we couldn't fly directly north from where we were because we would have gone over Ukraine. So the flight was diverted. We went past Ukraine. We kept going because we had to go past Gaza and Israel. And as soon as we were past all those areas, about 35 miles away from Gaza, the airplane, we could just about see Gaza almost. Then we turned north and headed up north. We were flying at about 500 miles an hour for 13 hours. In our description, of Pentecost, it describes where the people came from. If you move my flight a little bit south, it covers all that area. Doesn't go quite as far as India and Pakistan, but it goes much farther across uh, Africa. So you see all these vast, vast land and people of all countries, languages, customs, conflicts that were encompassed and represented on that day in Pentecost, all the people that were there. Modern day, it would be from Israel, Jordan, Iraq, Iran, Syria, Turkey, Italy, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Libya. Huge, vast people coming from all these different areas. And then hearing the word of God in their own languages. That's a miracle. And that's a miracle that we need today, and it's what the Spirit of God does and what we're called to do. Communication, I think, is very, very important for us to love each other. And we have communication which is verbal and nonverbal. Even if we think that we speak the language fine, sometimes our communication doesn't work out very well. When I was in India, I stayed at the home of a woman whose son had died, and she was about my age, a year earlier. She told me all about that, and I grieved with her. And my mother was dying from cancer at the same time, and I told her about it, and she comforted me, this mother who would lost a son and a son who was losing a mother. But you know what? I couldn't speak Arisa, and she couldn't speak English. Not one word. And yet... She told me that story. She showed me pictures, and I got all this information about her son. And we were able to communicate even though we didn't have a common name for our language. On the same trip, we were transported and uh, accompanied by someone who had great English, and we just could not communicate. We were at loggerheads and frustrated and felt like we were being taken advantage of, this person who was using his English we just couldn't connect very well at all. Another example. In upstate New York, I was called to begin a Latino congregation. Maybe a fourth to a third of the community was Latino, and everyone else was white. 
which means Italians, Irish, German, you know, I mean, the whole world. And they were all just clumped together in this. So it's these two groups, Latinos and whites, and all the tensions and racism and things that were happening in that. And I was called to begin a Latino congregation. And so in the past, it had worked really well for me to work with, with the children. In Ecuador, we had we made puppets, and, and all the kids came, and so we made puppets of, of the story of uh, Pharaoh and the Exodus. So we made these beautiful flyers that are kid-friendly with you know, all kinds of colors and splashes and saying, send your kids. We're going to have crafts and stories and singing, and we're going to make puppets. And I passed this out to you know, 100 families, and finally someone said to me, why are you doing this? And it turns out that titere, which is the word for puppets in Ecuador, in Puerto Rico means juvenile delinquents. <laughs> so I sent out my papers to 100 homes saying, send your kids, we're going to make juvenile delinquents at our church. <laughs> I grew up speaking Spanish. I know what I'm talking about. But these miscommunications. I decided to try again. So when we went to India, we made puppets and had a puppet show. And I named one of the puppets a name that the teacher from England said, you should never use that word. Because in England, that doesn't mean something very nice. And so I'd gone to this whole puppet show, repeating this word over and over and over again. <laughs> or a sermon that a Swedish missionary gave in Ecuador that the Ecuadorians never forgot. And he's wanting to talk about how God gives us life and gives us life in abundance. Except the word he kept using is ambulance. God wants us to have life and to have it in an ambulance. <laughs> so even while we think that we have the same language, sometimes we just can't communicate. I think that's going on in our country. It's going on in our world. I don't know what's wrong with all those people why they believe that they do. Things are very clear and logical and straightforward. Why don't they just learn? It's all in black and white and English. Everyone should know. And yet we have these divisions. And we're at war. The book that we're going to be reading about Palestine and Israel is about people who have lived in that land for centuries and have been overrun by one empire after another. The writer talks about there were three years before Jesus was born when the Hasmoneans got freedom for a short while, three, four years. And the rest of the time from 722 B.C. when the northern kingdom of Israel fell until the present day, the people of Palestine have been under occupation. And so he talks about how scriptures in the New Testament is addressing, Jesus is talking about how do you live in lands that are overrun by empires where there's abuse, where there's violence, where we just can't find the way to peace. And what we need is the Spirit of God to come to help us to hear the other and help us to speak in a language that they can hear. It's not easy to do. I'm still at 63 years old trying to figure out how to talk about racism without making people mad. And there's other topics too, that just people become angry. And you can say words and people will just leave the conversation. One word is enough to end the conversation. So how do we talk about the healing that this world needs? And in the story of Pentecost, it says that the, language, that the Spirit was poured out on the people, on the disciples, and they spoke in different languages. And then it describes these people that I just described, this, this huge, vast continent with all these conflicts and all these misunderstandings and all these struggles. And it says each of them heard it in their own language. What is your language? The language of your soul, the language of your heart? doing counseling in upstate New York. I was counseling with Latinos. I had some who were just fluent bilingual. And when they would be speaking to me, they'd be talking about English. And then when they start telling me about their mother, they'd switch to Spanish. I thought that was intriguing. 
that when they talked about their mothers, they, they went to their mother tongue in their language. And so the Spirit of God comes to the heart of where people are, hears them in their language, speaks to them in their language. And I think the miracle in this story is both the speaking and the hearing. And it's what we need most in this world is the Spirit of God that will come and help heal our communications. And that's what Pentecost is about. It's about having that happen all the time in our lives. We celebrate it every year. And the book of Acts is just something that you can't stop the Spirit. The more they tried to stop it, the more it spread. And the more it transformed people, and the more it broke the rules that people had said about where the Spirit of God is supposed to work, and who's included and who's not included. And the Spirit of God blows all of that apart. Yesterday we had our reach meal. And people were cared for who were hungry and weary. They received food, they received plants, they received love. There's a woman in her 80s who was newly diagnosed with cancer. And she said, I need a ride to Morgantown for my surgery. And the people who've taken me the past have died. In the past three months, I've lost three of my closest people close to me. So we talked about how it's a time of grieving in her life and the tears that come. And listening to her cry, what is the language that she's speaking? What is she expressing? The concerns of the cancer, the loss of her loved ones, the need for transportation, the isolation. And so I prayed with her and we will find her a ride and accompany her to her surgery. Hearing her language, hearing the Spirit of God speaking through her, and speaking back to her the promise and comfort of God. You know what happened on that Pentecost day is Peter preaches, and then within a few days, this whole place is transformed. 3,000 people added to the church. And there's an amazing text that talks about they had everything in common, that they even sold some of their properties and their food and everything they shared. And yesterday was the day in which we were sharing. We were living that Pentecost story. And here is a child of God, and she said, you know, my surgery might be long. I don't want someone to stay all day long. And I looked at her and I thought, you're my sister. Why would we abandon you? We have our needs in common. We have our cries in common. There was a man whose son's home was burned in a fire. And he was in need of a gas stove and a workable oven and dishwasher. He so said, we'll see if we can help find that for you. Our different congregations, uh, the Kaima has been working on gathering furniture for people who've lost these things. And there is also a resource among this that might help with appliances. So I want to check that out. But I also thought I would tell you. So to you hear the spirit of God's language reaching you from this person yesterday, and maybe you have resources of a gas stove, oven, and a dishwasher to help someone who's crying out to God. There's a woman yesterday who came who lost her job several months ago. And she was afraid that she could lose her home, lose everything. And yesterday she came and she's absolutely ecstatic. She said, I have a good job. I'm secure. And I pray for your church every day because you prayed for me and you got me through that time. People come through here with all different needs. And even if they don't know how to express them, the Spirit of God is crying out on their behalf. And for us to have ears to hear those cries and to be able to speak the language. Yesterday, I heard so many answers to prayer. This week, I've heard tons of answers to prayer. Some I can share and, and some that are private, I guess. Um... One of the most fantastic things was, was Val, yesterday. Boy, we should hear it from your voice. <laughs> Can you tell, me, tell us what you told me yesterday? Would you mind? My daughter had an MRI one year following her spine surgery, and we got the results. 
after the surgery and radiation, the tumors are now dead. <laughs> There are times going through the, those days um, in which Val was a long ways from we, where Gary was and going through this incredible pain of watching their daughter in pain and suffering. Um, and, and we couldn't see the end of that story. How is God going to work in that? We didn't know how that was going to work out. And so the Spirit of God is praying with us and, and making our prayers better because we don't know how to pray well and meeting those needs. And so they go to the to the doctor, and the doctor says, the tumors are dead. You can be free from that. I heard other stories too. So people getting their homes, people having healing, people with relationships that are healed. I was hearing, I just was thinking, my goodness, what a day. Stories of healing, reconciliation, provisions. Yesterday was a day that the Church of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, and the Lutherans were working together to feed people. And there are religious language barriers that you have to overcome to do things like that. And people that we will shun and push away and say, no, they're not one of us, or they're the wrong party, or they're the wrong this, or the wrong that. And the Holy Spirit works in the Pentecost spirit to bring people together to care for other people, bringing people together of different languages, different customs, different perspectives, different worldviews. And what the uh, pastor from Bethlehem says is, this is a very different model from empires coming over and imposing their language, their customs, their paperwork. The pastor's father has lived under four empires in one land in his lifetime. And every empire came with different demands and different languages, different nationalities and different paper requirements and different harassments. And all his life he lived with that. So the pastor says, Pentecost is a story in which God respects the cultures, the languages, the customs, the, the, the experiences of all people and brings them into understanding with each other, a healing of those relationships, of enemy countries that are brought together to overcome. We had stories of people working together to feed the hungry. We had stories of Connie traveling miles to come and help feed and work in the garden. Just like on that Pentecost day where people traveled miles to come and be with others and then to share. Pentecost is happening in our midst and God wants it to happen more. There is more to be done. You know, there is this, we have in all, so many churches, concern about how we're aging churches and how are we going to survive and somehow we have to get the youth to come to our church. And our focus is self-centered most of the time when we talk about that. We think, well, it's, it'd be good for the kids. But I think most of the time what's deep down inside us is this desire for survival. What's comforting for me with this Pentecost story is that God speaks the language of Thaddeus and Saray and all of our young people when we don't speak their language. That God knows their cries, God knows what's important through their experiences when we don't connect. I remember saying something with my daughter some years ago, and she says, Dad, that's so five minutes ago. <laughs> and that expression is probably so five minutes ago. <laughs> and I didn't know what she, you know, I was thinking, what language are you talking about? What happened five minutes ago? But we're concerned about our youth. And what happens in the Pentecost moment is things look very different from what people imagined very different from what people expected. The things were transformed. The disciples were traveling through the land and they would see people who were speaking tongues but hadn't been you know, baptized in the name of Jesus yet. And they said, wait a minute, this is really confusing. What, what's going on with this? It's because the Spirit of God is working everywhere. The Spirit of God is working everywhere in our world today and the prayer is for our eyes to open and to see it and for God to anoint our lips so that we can speak the language of the people we meet. We can hear their cries and we can connect with good news. We can be witnesses. And when we can't understand those things and the Spirit of God cries out on our behalf with the people that we are trying to understand and trying to connect with. 
the conflicts in our world that are beyond us. It's only by the Spirit of God coming and healing our broken ears and broken tongues, turning our curses into blessings, turning our hatred into love, turning our narrow-mindedness into God's wide vision, opening our hearts to receive what we thought couldn't be received, bringing healing to places that we never dared to hope healing would come. What is too much, too difficult? What is beyond God's ability and power? We heard today that at the sound of God's voice, the mountains tremble, the waters roar. And what my friends who are agnostics have taught me is that my understanding and view of God is way too small that God is much more than what I have begun to imagine. And scripture says that that God is a God of mercy and love beyond what we will ever be able to experience or name or hold. May that love surround you this week. May God's spirit claim you. May your tongues and ears be open to connect with people for healing, for hope, for goodness, in new lands that maybe you thought you'd never encounter. God's peace be with you. Ray and Thaddeus, can you come up? And if you would like to be accompanied with your families, you can do that. And there's banners that they've made.
Yeah. Okay, good. Affirmation of baptism. Come on forward. You guys are amazing. I present Thaddeus and Saray. Thaddeus and Saray, yeah. Who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism? Okay, thank you. Um, they have uh, made banners, and on your banners, you have your verse. Would you read your verse for the people? These are the verses that they have um, chosen to accompany their lives and guide them. For the Lord and his good and love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Psalm 100, verse 5. Live in that for the rest of your life. With the instruments for music to the Lord that King David had made for giving thanks to the Lord for a steadfast love endures forever. Second Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 6. Spread music, spread your music throughout our world. Let's pray together. Merciful God, we thank you for this sister and brother, for Saray and for Thaddeus, whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You've called them to yourself, enlightened them with gifts of your spirit, nourished them in the community of faith, Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism. Unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And together with the congregation, I ask you to profess your faith. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, Say, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you away from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth. earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, God's, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's, God's only Son, Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You've made public profession of your faith with this creed. Do you intend to continue to live in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deeds, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, respond, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. And people of God, do you promise to support these sisters, this sister and brother, Sir Ray and Thaddeus, and to pray for them in their life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Okay, if you would just come here and kneel. Kathy, could you hold this for me? Come and kneel here, and then I'm going to pray for each of you. Let us pray. 
We give you thanks, O God, that through water and Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up and serrate the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in her serving. And her patience and suffering and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Thaddeus the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith. Guide his life. Empower him with his serving and with patience and suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us rejoice with our sister and brother in Christ. You can turn and face the congregation. Rejoice, rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Uh, you know, one of the delights of confirmation is I got to spend time with them. And they are really, truly are bright, amazing people who have stretched me and taught me and we've grown together and um, I've been so enriched by them. So thank you for your gifts and your life. Um, we'll have a reception afterwards following the service right out in the narthex. There's food to celebrate them. Let's pray together. Oh, Lord, our God, we thank you for Srey and for Thaddeus and for their families, for their work, for their life, for their celebrations, for their gifts, for their growing. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would bless them, bless their homes. May they be homes where your light shines, where your peace comes, where they are restored. And as they go out each day, O oh Lord, may they go out in your power, discovering, O oh Lord, new um, adventures and gifts that you have for them. May they be a blessing to all they encounter. And their families, O oh Lord, bless them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Pour out your spirit upon this earth, O oh Lord, for reconciliation, for peace, for caring, for those in need, for accompanying the lonely, for end to wars, for end to violence, for increased understanding, for our nation and the nations of this world that just can't seem to speak each other's languages. Come, O oh Lord, with your healing. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you have already conquered. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We bring before you, Lord, those who are dear to us, those who are on our prayer lists. For Jerry and for Mitzi, for John Hafer, for Kara Fleming and for little baby Miles, for Bill Crawford, David Tibbetts, Rosie and Becky McIntyre, Jack Zeeland, Carolyn Yammer, Barb Simmons, Shirley Smith, Donna Yader, Joyce DeMunbrun, Pam Mulligan, Faye Crawford, Marion Biddle, Robert Twin, Kathy Powell, Patty Wilson, Bert Leach, Lisa and Dave Ahern, Mary Lou Rose, Laura Murray, Anna Brooke, Sharon McKenzie, Leanne and Jason Leisure, Rick and Abel Rounds, Jim, who's in need of appliances, for Scott Llewellyn, who will be facing surgery for fusing of discs, for Elaine, who has cancer, for those that we name now silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Oh, Lord, for our graduates and for the graduates in our area and throughout this world, for Sarah, for Joseph, for Camden, for Patty, we pray your blessings. Oh, Lord, as you have equipped them, may they use their gifts to spread your light. Lord, in your mercy. 
Hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, that you are alive, that your spirit is at work, that you go before us and prepare the way so that when we are called, you are already at work. We love you. We are yours. We celebrate you this day through Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Spread peace. And I invited um, some of the kids and the young adults to um, accompany us on their instruments. And Jeff Smith came to me and said, can I have one? <laughs> <laughs> so we are accompanied by the children, the young adults, and Jeff Smith. <laughs> if you feel like you need to clap, please do. If you feel like you need to get up and dance, we'll laugh at you, but please do it. <laughs>
call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world, through Jesus Christ, our <coughs> true vine. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, you. with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give, give God, God thanks, thanks and praise. And praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times, in all places, give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting. Your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It's given for you. Do this in remembrance of me, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us and send us forth, burning with justice and peace and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, Father who, art who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us Bless this day our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses. trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. Amen. Thanks be to God. All are welcome to come and receive. As you come up, we have bowls here that have gluten-free bread. The bread that I will be passing out has gluten in it. If you like gluten-free, you can take from the little bowl and bring up a piece, and we'll bless that. 
Um, bring a cup up with you if you would like grape juice. Uh, there are cups that are pre-filled with grape juice. If you bring up an empty cup, then we'll fill that with wine and bless that. All are welcome. Oh, 
God speaks the language of little ones and big ones, young ones and old ones. Here is the language, understand and speaks. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. <coughs> Amen. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. 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 Our hymn, O Spirit of Life. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Hallelujah.